Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video here while my kids are being quiet and not acting crazy in the background. Um, try to answer some questions that I see come up a lot, both on the Facebook page and I get questioned on YouTube a lot because I have several videos. Um, in the initial setup, I see a lot of questions about the tack versus VR coil. So the VR coil is if you're using timing control. So once you get to this selection, you push the joystick over. So tack is no timing control, VR coil is with timing control. Your distributor based timing is going to be the lowest timing that you're ever going to want. So Let's say, for example, my motor, I have 16.1. Um, the, the handhelds are kind of weird. Sometimes they'll hit odd numbers and stay on multiples of that number, so don't worry about the decimal place. Um, the VR Advance on several of them, I think mine was set at like 16 or 17 degrees, and that is actually a calibration adjustment. If you're using timing control, you really need to check this. Whatever your base timing, your idle timing, and your max timing is under load, um, you need to check the no load advance at idle. You need to check it at 1100 RPM. You need to check it at 2000 RPM and 4000 RPM. For example, if you are telling the handheld at 4000 RPM, to have 32 degrees of timing and you actually check it at 4000 and it's say 28 degrees well your VR advance you can use to adjust that so you would add you know your two three four degrees whatever it takes to make everything match and it's a linear curve from base to 4000 so if you're off five degrees at 4000 you're probably going to be off two degrees at 2000 and right on at idle so that's essentially what that's for they have a number in there already is kind of a guesstimate. Um, mine was actually pretty far off with their guesstimate, so I had to reduce that quite a bit. I'm actually on like four degrees of of additive advance, and that made mine right on. So it's definitely something to check if you're, especially if you're running boosted. Um, you definitely don't want to be adding a bunch of extra timing that you're not accounting for. So once you Go through that. I'm not hooked up to my ECU, so it wants to uh, ask questions like that. Do I want to save? Um, of course, your fan setups. You need to set up. If you are not using fan control, you need to disable it. If you don't disable your fan control and you're not using it, it will throw a fault code. So be sure and set those up properly. And it does have, the power adders have two fan controls. I don't think the non-power adders do. I think they just have one. So if you are only using one fan, you need to disable fan two, or else again, you'll get a fault code. Um, I already have the EFI Pro Tuning set up. Mine came with it hidden. And to if, if yours is a newer model, it might not be hidden. Um, but mine's a year old, so it was hidden. You went into display setup and pro calibration it was set to hide you just tell it show and then it'll show up um, for those of you that your handheld never shuts off you can enable sleep mode um, if you're using nitrous you'll want to show the n2o calibration so that you can make that adjustment and then also the power adder calibrations if you want to do some more intricate calibrations and you know what you're doing so once you've got that set up, you can come in here and your AFR targets, now it opened up boost targets, which if, uh, if you didn't have the pro calibration showing, if it was still hidden, these three boost settings would not be there. Now boost is at 180 kPa, which I think roughly translates to 24 and a half pounds of boost, something like that. That is a linear scale, so if my wide open, like for example my engine, I'm at 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here. If I only wanted 20 degrees 
at full boost and I'm running 10 PSI, I've got to do some math. Um, because this is a linear scale from zero boost to 180 kPa. So you just have to do a little bit of math and figure out if I start here and I want to end up here, where do I put this at? I think on mine I've got it set at like 10 degrees at full boost and that puts me at about 23 degrees um, total timing at the boost level that I like to run at. Same thing with your spark timing. And there's where your VR advance is again. If you've got a power adder, like a turbo or supercharger, come in here. Um, sorry, earlier I was talking about Spark, but I was really on the AFR page. So this is where you would do your Spark. Your AFR would also be a linear scale. Um, let me go back to that so I don't confuse anybody. So if I'm at 12 for an AFR here and I want to be at say 11.2 um, at 10 pounds of boost I may tell this I want it to be at 10 at 25 and you just have to find that happy medium to get where you want to get same thing with the spark I think most people that are running power adder models have probably played with all of this but I know some some new users are out there and maybe this will help somebody. I oh. guess I didn't like that since I'm not hooked up. And then the crank and warm up settings. Uh, Joe and a lot of the other guys suggest turning your prime fuel down to negative 100 so that it shuts it off. I'm on E85. I have to have mine up around 120 or so because my crank fuel's maxed out at like 99. Um, so I have to crank on it for quite a bit to get it to start unless I turn the prime fuel up a little bit. And it doesn't seem to affect my hot starts. Um, my crank fuel at 170 is set pretty close to zero. This one's set to about 90 and that one's set to 95. And then my after start, I'm up around 60 or so for... I believe the after start probably runs for about 30 seconds or so after it starts. And then my warm up fuel is set at zero. I believe what I'm going to try next is to reduce my cranking IAC to try to limit the airflow in. Maybe I can reduce the cranking fuel. Maybe that'll help. But anyway, this video got kind of long, so hopefully that helps some people.